Today we've got the BlackBerry Z10 with us. It's the first BlackBerry 10 phone from Research in Motion, now known as BlackBerry. BlackBerry hopes this phone can save it from the brink of the extinction. As you can see, the first thing you'll notice about the phone is that it resembles the iPhone 5. But it's not. It's a lot bigger for starters. It also has rounded corners and flat edges, just like the iPhone. The phone is 130mm tall and 65.6mm wide. It is just 9mm thick and fits comfortably in the hand. It's, it is also just 135 grams, which makes it quite light. The, the front has an edge-to-edge 4.2-inch screen. But one thing one will notice is that when the screen is on, it doesn't really fill the full display. And the phone has a thick uh, bezel. The screen is an LCD display with 1280 into 768 pixels. It's an HD resolution and has a 355 PPI. That's actually more than the iPhone 5's 326 PPI density. While lettering is fine and crisp, you, and you get to see our dark colors, we often found ourselves keeping the screen at maximum brightness to get the best out of it. The screen is a fingerprint magnet. On the back, you get a textured plastic, which we found really helpful in making the phone better to grip. The big BlackBerry logo on the back serves as an NFC antenna. The phone has an 8 megapixel uh, rear camera along with an LED flash. On top of the phone, you will find the power button as well as a 3.5 mm stereo headset jack. The bottom has a speaker port which produces very nice sound at respectable volume levels. The left side of the phone has a micro HD port which you can use for displaying stuff out and also a micro USB port for charging and for connecting the phone to the computer. We actually found this a hassle because it interferes in the daily functioning when the phone is connected to a cord. On the right hand side we find the volume rockers which is separated by another button which serves as the control button for the voice commands. To take a screenshot one has to press both the volume buttons simultaneously. If you're in the camera mode pressing either of these buttons takes a picture. On removing the back we can see the 1800 mAh battery and also the slot for the SD card. The phone takes a micro SIM. The back cover has the connectors for the NFC antenna which stretches from the BlackBerry logo on the back cover. Coming to the software, it's a completely refreshed BlackBerry 10, which is powered by QNX, a software which BlackBerry acquired a couple of years back. Once we uh, switch the screen on, you can see that the time is displayed very clearly. Also, we have notifications on the left hand side and a button which takes you directly to the camera. You'll also notice that there are no physical buttons. So the OS is completely gesture based. To open the phone, you have to actually go from the bottom of the screen, touching the BlackBerry logo and stretching up. And one can see a nice animation effect which gives you a peek to the inside. Once inside, you can see your active frames. If one goes to the right, one can see the icons for the various apps, which continues further. While moving from one to the other, there's again the peak effect, which BlackBerry is touting as one of the major features. One of the major things with the BlackBerry 10 OS is the BlackBerry Hub, which one gets by swiping towards the right. Now the BlackBerry Hub is a place where all your incoming notifications are gathered. 
So you can have your BBM, text messages, Gmail, Facebook, Twitter and all other social networking sites in the same place. When you get a notification, it is visually displayed by the action symbol, the red asterisk mark. Clicking on each icon will take you to each of your inboxes. You can also get all your notifications in a single location. The BlackBerry 10 OS is highly gesture based. So after opening the screen, one has to learn a lot of gestures. Let's just see a few of them. For starters, if one swipes down from the top of the screen, you will get your settings as well as some other connectivity options. In an, if you're inside an app, to close the app, you will actually have to swipe from the bottom of the screen. Once you do that, the app becomes a miniature active frame, which can be developed by app developers to support widgets. To close an active frame, one has to click the cross mark at the bottom right corner. Another important gesture is to get to the hub. One has to swipe from the bottom and then you can see your notifications. But those notifications are not clickable. You actually have to continue the motion towards the left to get into your hub. And then from there, you can reply to all your messages. The BlackBerry keyboard is a completely new experience. In fact, it's very magical. So now let's see how that works. We're in the messaging app. I'm going to try typing a message. The As we start typing out, it starts suggesting words above the letter it thinks we're going to click next. And once we find the word we want, we just have to swipe upwards. And it takes the word. Let's continue now. It's also, the predictive text also comes in the space bar underneath. In conclusion, while we find the keyboard to be the best on any stock operating system and the BlackBerry Flow navigation to be very refreshing, the lack of apps in BlackBerry world is going to be really hold this phone back. Priced at Rs 43,490, we find it a bit too pricey. The sweet price for this phone should have been somewhere around Rs 35,000. That would have put it in competition with the S3 and the Galaxy Note 2.